Hey there, Southside. Welcome to church. We're so glad that you tuned in to worship with us today. We're really excited to worship together, and we're starting something totally new today. We're going to be looking at a brand new series of sermons called Virtue in the Time of the Virus. It's going to be really exciting. I'll let Dave fill you in on what we're doing, and guess what? We've got something super special today. I think it might be the first time this has ever happened, but we are delivering a remote sermon to you here today for this stream of your service. So get ready for that. Dave is out in the world at an unspecified remote location, and he is going to be leading us through God's Word. But we're going to start by worshiping God, by singing together, and let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, we invite you into this place, whatever this place is, God, as we are gathered together as families or maybe alone, as we're looking at computer screens or TV screens, as we're on the couch or we're standing to worship together, God, we ask that you would be here with us. Send your spirit, lead us in worship, and let us know that even as we are alone or we are with families, God, that your whole church stands together to worship in this moment as one body declaring to the this world, the good news of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. Oh, welcome, church. We serve an awesome God. Let's come together wherever we are and give him praise. People come together, strange as neighbors. Our blood is one. Children of generations of every nation of kingdom come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Come down, all creation, 
sermon from out on the trail here today. I'm at the Glen Rose Cliffs Trailhead in southeast Spokane and uh, I just think it's a great location for what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about patience and you really need patience on a hike because it's usually hard work. You may or may not be in great shape and yet there's going to be this big payoff if you just go through all the trouble and all the work of getting there. Now my wife Brenda and I love hiking. We're not fancy about it. We don't have those poles and you know $500 shoes or anything. We just like to get outdoors, get some fresh air, get out in God's creation, turn off the TV, and get some sunshine the two months of the year that it exists in Spokane. Let me tell you about one hike we did though, because it's a great metaphor for what I want to talk about with the coronavirus. There was a time where we just were going to pop out the door and go for a quick hike. You know, so we said, hey, let's go someplace. We'll just hike for like an hour and then, um, you know, grab a snack or something and be home. And so we went out to Bowl and Pitcher and we thought, well, there's tons of trails here. We'll just pick one and we'll have a great time. Well, we get there and we don't know which one to do, but we got lucky and we ran into the ranger, the park ranger. And we're talking to him and somehow I think we might have mentioned, well, we really like going on loop hikes, you know, because you get to see everything in one big loop. And he got this look in his face like, oh, you're gonna love this one. There's this trail that goes and you go through the riverbed, the dry riverbed in the summer, and then you loop back and it's beautiful. It'll take you about an hour and you guys will love it. There's plenty of signs and, and uh, you know, I was a little concerned that maybe we wouldn't know exactly where to, where to go, but he said, no, it's totally easy to find. You'll be great. So we start excited because we love loops. We love, we don't wanna just go out and see everything and see the same stuff on the back. We wanna see everything. And so we're excited and we've got our water and we got our shoes on and we go out and we go hiking. Well, we get like 30 minutes in. It was really beautiful rock formations and we did find the riverbed and that was really cool. You know, 30 minutes doesn't seem obvious where to go to loop back. So 45 minutes, still no signs, no signs of life. <laughs> Just, you know, no idea how to get back but let's go a little farther let's just keep trying we love hiking so maybe it'll be a two hour hike big deal so then we get about an hour hour 15 hour and a half at one point we're just walking like next to highway 53 out in nine mile like 10 feet from the highway it's a hundred degrees and it's not fun it's not beautiful we're very impatient and we just kind of finally go, well, there's no loop. There never was a loop. There never will be a loop. So we just have to turn around. So big deal. We're in good shape. You know, we want to, we can turn around. It shouldn't be such a big deal. 
but it's like the hottest day of the year in the driest place in the county and we're out of water. We didn't eat because we were just gonna remember pop out for a little little hike. And so we're miserable and the way back was miserable. Now fortunately we're nice to each other and we know to just not speak in those situations. I've learned that, but it was just miserable. And so we're just trudging back like this death march back no water, looking for any way that maybe we can shortcut back or, or we can, you know, just kind of make the best of it, find some shade. There's no shade. And by the time we get back to our cars, to our car, excuse me, we're just so tired. All we want to do is shut our mouths, get in our car, turn on the air conditioning. We just want to get home and we want it to be over. It occurred to me as I was getting ready to teach the virtue of patience this week that this coronavirus crisis is very much like that hike. It, it's like a little exciting at first. The idea of we're gonna have to get along differently. We're gonna have to figure out life differently. That was kind of thrilling to me. I was excited about what the church would be like if we had to shut everything down and really be the church without the building and without the services normal. And I heard all these great things about things that people were doing for one another and great attitudes and great generosity. And so I really was excited. And then I thought, well, you know, this will be a couple weeks. We'll bear down. I had a feeling we might have to make it to Easter, even though nobody wanted to hear that. I had a feeling we'd have to make it to Easter in this weird way. But then they started closing everything else you could do to have any fun. No restaurants, no events, no sports. That was a rough one for a lot of you. No anything. And so we're all just stuck in our houses and we can go to the grocery store sometimes. And that's about it. And you start growing impatient. What was exciting at first, what had a novelty to it, is now starting to feel like, man, when is this going to be over? I can't wait till I can do these simple things that I've always taken for granted and do them again. Well, let me tell you, if we're gonna make it through this, we need patience. We need to develop and rediscover the Christian virtue of patience. And patience is not just, you know, hanging in there and sticking it out. Patience is believing that God's gonna win, but here's the real kicker, it's believing that waiting for that win is actually worth it. I want to look at James chapter 5 today. It's going to start a little earlier than you would think because he talks about grumbling and other things. And you might not see the connection to the patience of the prophets and of Job, but I'm going to show you how it all ties together. So would you turn with me in your Bibles or go ahead and of course look at the screen and listen to the great words from James chapter 5. In James chapter 5, James, the brother of Jesus, writes this. He says, Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remained steadfast. You've heard of the steadfastness of Job. And you've seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Now let's walk through the passage together, okay? We're going to do what we always do at Southside. We're going to pick it apart. We're going to go in order. And we believe that every word in the Bible is the inspired word of God. And so we're going to learn some life change from it today. Let's walk through the passage together. In verse 9, it says this, Do not grumble against one another, brothers so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Okay, it's kind of important. This is why I included verse nine and 10 in here too, because the opposite of patience, the virtue we want, the opposite is not just impatience, you know, like where you're an impatient person, so you don't have this virtue. The opposite of patience is actually being a grumbling person. Are you a grumbling person? I'm quite sure that I am quite often. But the opposite of being patient is not just impatient, it's grumbling. Now, why is there no grumbling and what does that have to do with any of this? Well, James tells us right there in the word because there will be a consequence. He says, I t uh, his brother Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, I tell you on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. 
Now, could you imagine if you and I had to give account for every careless complaint or criticism that we have given during the time of the virus? Just this month alone, we would be guilty of our sins before God, hopeless before his holiness, if it wasn't for the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. Now, have you done any grumbling this month? How many of you grumbled when they shut down the schools? How many of us grumbled when they started shutting down restaurants? How many of us grumbled as it even felt like some of our basic rights have been taken away? In the early stages, some were very grumbly and very complaining uh, about what was being put upon the churches. Fortunately, it's been put upon every other organization as well, and so we can reason our way through it. But I've complained and grumbled so many times. When I go out for a run in the morning, I grumble in my heart. How come no one else will get out of the way for that six feet? How come it's always me? I got in line at Dick's Hamburgers the other day and I was so hungry and I have been staying away from restaurants really just, my wife's such a good cook and one nice thing is we've been having like a family meal every night during this month. But I just felt like, you know, she's been working hard, we're all tired, I'm gonna grab one of the, my favorite blessings in the world, Dick's Hamburgers. And so I go down there and like every other place, they've got the little uh, X on the ground so you know where to stand. And so I go up there and I stand on the X and some guy comes up to me and doesn't look at me but just goes, hey bub, there's other people here before you. And in my heart, I'm thinking, well then why didn't they get in line to order? But I, I was proud of myself. I just kept it to myself. I didn't call him bub or tough guy or anything like that. But I was just so in my heart, just so annoyed. And I've had so many countless things like that where you're at the store and you're waiting. Now we have to wait to go in the store and then once you get in the store, they don't have any carts because they're disinfecting them. And then when you finally get a cart, you can't find anything that you need because it's all out or you just get behind someone in your aisle who is standing in front of the pickles for reasons no one will ever understand standing in front of the pickles for three minutes while you have to wait your turn because of social distancing. There's a lot of grumbling going on. Why no grumbling? Because there will be a consequence, but also because God is watching. I wanna take a moment though, and I want you to read this little prayer and this little declaration that's on the screen with me. Go ahead and read with me. I will be patient. I will not grumble because God is good and grumbling is a denial and rejection of his thoughtful and considerate care for me. Okay, why no grumbling? There will be a consequence, but also because God is watching. Do you notice what James says? Don't you judge because there's an actual judge and he's standing at the door. And it's not the nice standing at the door, like in Revelation 3.20, behold I stand at the door and knock, and whoever will let me in, I will come in and dine with him. It's a judgment and conviction standing at the door. More in our vernacular, like the police, or like some official coming to the door to take care of business. Let's get back to our passage in James. In verse 10, James says this, Okay, don't grumble and don't judge. There is a judge. And then he tells us how we can summon the ability to not grumble. He says, as an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. And then he goes on, you've heard of the steadfastness of one prophet in particular, Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. This is so awesome. God tells us in his word here and in so many other places that he wants us to draw inspiration from the events and the people of the Bible. He gives three ways just in that little passage in James how we can get inspiration to have patience, to have the virtue of patience in the time of the virus. First, he says, look at the prophets. And you know, you could read on this this week, Nehemiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Nathan, all these different prophets of God. 
they remained steadfast to the Lord. Being a prophet was not something to brag about or to have arrogance or pride about. Being a prophet was to be a doormat for the Lord. Being a prophet was to say what no one else wanted to say, what no one else wanted to hear, and your thanks at the end was often being run out of town or slandered or just constantly, constantly, constantly criticized. So we don't develop patience by looking at those who have it easy. We develop the virtue of patience by looking at those who have it hard. James says first the prophets, but then he says specifically Job. Do you know the story of Job? Job is the one who had it all. Job is the, in our thinking, the Bill Gates or the uh, Jeff Bezos or some other wealthy, wonderful, I have it all kind of person. Job had everything and he blessed God and he loved God and he worshiped God. Well, the way the story of Job tells it is that the devil himself comes to the Lord and says, well, of course your little pal Job loves you and blesses you and, and worships you. It's because he has everything. He has everything he could ever want. And so the devil devises a scheme. He thinks he's going to pull one over on God. He thinks that he's going to be able to get Job to curse God. And so he says to the Lord, well, let's take everything away from him and see what happens then. Let's make sure that he has nothing and let's see if he loves you even then. And the Lord, in ways that we don't understand, who knows how this conversation went down, but the Lord says, all right, let's do it. I, I tell you, I believe in my boy Job. And so when you read the story in the book of Job, it just goes from worse to worse, insult upon insult, injury upon injury. Job loses his family, Job loses his possessions and his wealth, and even his health. And at the very end, his friends say, Job, why don't you curse God and die? Why don't you just curse God and die? And Job then beautifully explains that it's not for us to understand, it's not for us to know all of God's reasons why, but it's for us to worship and respect and honor the Lord. We're supposed to draw inspiration from the prophets and from Job, but there's a little gem buried in there. It says that those prophets spoke in the name of the Lord. And their blessing, their patience that they developed, was because they were in focused and purposeful ministry for God himself. Now I want to remind you that patience, the virtue patience, is believing that God wins and that waiting for that win is worth it. Now I want you to have your mind blown for a moment. I don't know if you can see just the vista and some of the beauty behind me, but we've made it towards the top of our hike today. And Jesus told about blessing on the top of a hill, very similar to this. But first, I want to blow your mind with just how opposite our understanding of blessing is than how blessing is defined in the Bible. Now in James, after he talked about the prophets and Job and their focus and their laser-like intensity on the name of the Lord, it says this in verse 11. Behold, or remember, we consider those blessed who remained steadfast. Now that sounds very biblical and very sweet and very wonderful and precious. But what James is saying is the ones that are blessed are the ones that really had to persevere and go through the ringer and come out the other side and all they had on the other side was God. We are blessed, think about this, when we're patient. Just like on a hike, how it's hard and we're thirsty and we might be hungry and we might even get lost, there's that great payoff at the top of the hill when you get the view or when you've accomplished what you set out to accomplish. But see, we don't think of it like that. We want blessing to be everywhere all the time, happiness, joy, contentment. We want this to be over. We want to have what we want. We want to do what we want. And it's because I think sometimes we read a different Bible. James' Bible said, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast, but we might read the ADV version of the Bible, the American Dream version. We consider those blessed who have a lot of money. 
Or maybe you read the JCV version, the jealous complainer version. Behold, we consider those blessed who have more than I do. Just more than I do. That's who's really blessed. How about the WDV? We consider those blessed who never have trials. Maybe you're old fashioned and you like the KJV. No, not the King James Version, the Kardashian Jenner Version. We consider those blessed who were born into privilege. How about the SHV, the Sinful Human Bible? We consider those blessed, or happy if you will, who get away with their sin. That's what we really want. Not the persecution, not the steadfastness and the suffering. We just want to get away with our sin. Or maybe you read the E-H-H-E-H-M-M-A-W-E-S-W V Bible. That's the Eeyore, ho-hum, everybody hates me, might as well eat some worms version of the Bible, which says, we consider those blessed who aren't me. Wah, wah. Why are we so surprised when blessing is hardship or trial or challenge? Why is this so amazing and new to us? Why would we expect anything different than to go through the coronavirus trial and have to suffer, have to wait, have to develop Christian patience in order to have the payoff of God's fellowship and God's glory? See, Jesus gave a talk on a mountain, a little hill just like this, and he sat down on that hill and he spoke to the crowds. And imagine what it would be like to hear his words, to see the beauty in the distance, and to expect to hear about victory and winning and overcoming, and instead to hear that blessing or happiness comes through in this way. Listen in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful ones, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then finally, perhaps most cruelly to that crowd, blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Then rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. And he reminds them, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Think about this. The greatest sermon ever given on blessing. I mean, he uses the word blessing over and over and over for effect. The greatest sermon ever on blessing is not about abundance and wealth and ease and security. It's about patience. It's about the virtue of patience. If you want to be blessed by God, develop patience. Patience is a virtue we desperately need in the time of the virus. To wrap up James' words on this virtue, we actually see that the godly among us recognize the gentleness of God, though. Thank God, the gentleness of God in giving us patience during this time of trial and crisis. In verse 11, James reminds them, you've seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Don't you want that, church? Don't you want to thrive, not just survive, during this time of global crisis? Don't you want to have the ability to say that I know things are tough, I know I might lose everything, I know that I don't know what my future holds, but I do know who holds my future? Don't you want to lift your heart and lift your voice and say, my God will get me through this? We need the virtue of patience in the time of the virus. 
And patience is believing that God wins and that waiting for that win is worth it. How can we apply this this week? I want to keep it simple. First thing I ask you to do is pray for patience. Secondly, to practice patience and trust that God's going to deliver the ability to practice patience through the prayers that you've just prayed. Now, if you falter, confess your sin and repent. Say, Lord, I'm sorry that I snapped at that person or that I grumbled or that I didn't trust you. And confess that sin and repent of that sin and return to sweet fellowship with the Lord. But also, let's rejoice and celebrate any victories that we do have in the virtue of patience. As you start to see life change and sanctification and growth in your life spiritually, as you try to be more patient and develop these virtues each week that we're gonna teach, celebrate those victories. Say, thank you, Lord, for changing me. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the ability to thrive during the time of the virus. Would you pray with me? God, we're so thankful that you love us so much that through your Holy Spirit, you are willing to deliver to us all of these virtues, starting with patience. Thank you, God, that you were patient and endured suffering on the cross. Thank you, God, that you are patient as you deal with us as human whiners and complainers and wonderers and question askers and doubters. Thank you, Lord, that you are patient, the scriptures say, not allowing any to perish. You've even delayed your return and your second coming so that more and more people may find faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God, give us this virtue of patience in the time of the virus, this belief in God and this belief that waiting for God to win is worth it. It's in your name we all pray together. Amen. we got a new song for you straight out of scripture let's declare it together
these not be just lyrics to a song, but words of blessing, a prayer of encouragement to our church. We declare it. We sing it out. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family in your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family in your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family saying before who have been on the sidelines who have been concerned of what other people think are concerned they don't sound good that they would declare this promise that they would speak this over someone they love that they would see someone come to Christ that this would give them courage to love the church to love the people who are lost so God we declare this again to unite to encourage to love to support our brothers and sisters in Christ that they would be courage, that they would have faith, that they would trust in you to see your kingdom done, to your will be done, to see your family, more families come. Let's sing it out. We want to see it done, Jesus. upon you in yeah. a thousand generations, in your family, in your children, in their children, the children, in his presence, go before you. All around you and within you, he is with you, he is with you in the morning, in the 
Thank you for your presence, for your blessing. Your word encourages us in you, that you love us. You are for us, not against us. You're our help, our peace. Jesus, help us to see that. Help us to trust you, that you know what's best. And even though these times seem uncertain, you know what's going on. So even though we cannot see everything, we ask you to have your way, Jesus. Have your way in our lives. your throne why do I turn my back on the risen sun why do I try to earn my place when you made a way for me through amazing grace cause I know the truth the empty to the risen proof, not my way, but your grace in my life, have your way, not my way, but your grace. Your grace in my 
Father God, we want to make that our prayer. We want to make that the cry of our hearts as we, as we worship today. God, would you have your way? Have your way in our lives. Make us the kind of people that you want us to be. Mold us into the image of your Son so that we can glorify you and bring glory to your name in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we want you to know, everyone, everyone who watches this video to know the great news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God loves you, and that it is possible for you to know God as a father, that God loves you, he is on your side, he is your fan, he is your friend, and he wants to be with you. And so we want you, if you are interested in knowing more about this Jesus who died for you, this Jesus who wants to have a relationship with you right now, today, then we want to ask you, go to our website and click that button that says Jesus card, and it'll have all the information you need to know to make a decision to start following Jesus today or to come back to him if you've been away from him. We also want you to know, and please don't forget to uh, give an offering today, to give during this time that we've been going through. We've uh, worshiped through song, we've worshiped by listening to a talk from God's word, and now we want to invite you to worship in another way. We want to invite you to worship by giving of what God has given to you. Will you pray with me as we pray for the offering here today? Father God, we know that you are a generous God. God, you've shown us your generosity in your creation. You've given us life and breath and family and friends and all things to enjoy, God. God, we remember your greatest act of generosity in giving us your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us and for our salvation. God, we know you've given us your spirit, who is your presence and your power, who's with us at all times. And so, God, we, your people, we give to. We give what we have to you. God, you've protected us and you've cared for us, and we believe you will bring us through this time stronger than ever. And so, God, we give firm in the knowledge that you are faithful to us, that you will keep your promises to us. God, we want to be faithful to you throughout this time as we give with thankfulness and joy. We want to honor you to see your gospel go forth and to be obedient always to your call in our lives. And so, God, we pray that you receive this offering. Oh, Lord, receive it to build your kingdom here and now in our hearts, in our church, in our world. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, don't miss all of the great online resources and stuff that we've got on there. Check us out on Facebook and on YouTube. Make sure that you subscribe. We've got new content every day, and so you want to make sure that you're not missing out on anything. One last thing we want to do together is to do a reading together. This is a reading that comes right out of the topic of patience that we looked at today, and it's just a way to solidify and crystallize what we heard and what we talked about as we go forward into this week, into this unfortunate familiar time, firm in the virtue that God has put before us. Will you read this with me? Lord, may I be patient, waiting for your rescue. I trust that you are sovereign and that your timing is perfect. May my heart be sensitive to my own grumbling and quick to repent when I sin. In this hour of challenge, I desire to shine for you. I believe that you will win. I believe that waiting for your win is worth it. In all things, may I have the virtue of patience, and so be like you. Amen. Hey, don't forget, stay connected, focus on God, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit.